right, so I have passed out on um, some of the tables, little red cards with nothing on them. I'm sorry, it's not a gift card to Starbucks, but it's like a card that I'd like each of you who, can, who, who has a fear about the future of WordPress to write your fear on the back of the card and pass it up front while I'm talking with all of you. Um, why am I asking for your fears? I actually have a collection of fears. Um, I collect fears about WordPress. I have a, a stack this thick now. See that? Um, why do I collect fears about the future of WordPress? Um, because there's all these companies out there that have these large software systems in the cloud. You may have heard of them. Do you know about them? They're in your pocket. They're everywhere. And they're really amazing and super convenient. And they intend to control all of the data in our lives, which is awesome because it means everything gets so much easier for everyone to, to use, to figure out. But it also means something gets taken away. And as someone who started out in the 90s in computing, um, I have watched how computers were once controlled by a select few, and then were controlled by a lot more people, and eventually controlled by large, extremely successful corporations. And we are in a situation in the world where we are all now very well controlled by computers. And that concerns me. Um, and when I think about WordPress as an ecosystem, it's one that, as it grows out of the ground in, uh, from roughly 2003 to 2004, it was an anomaly. It was a dark horse. Who knows what a dark horse is? It's from horse racing. Uh, the dark horse is the, is the horse that's not supposed to win. But it, out of nowhere, it kind of came and began to gather people around the world around. And this dark horse, for a time, became the platform that was something that everyone could own a piece of, which was happening in a time before these large companies out there, the cloud-based companies, they're unnamed, but they start with G, A, F, and A. <laughs> uh, they're very powerful. This is before those companies, WordPress was this alternative dark horse technology platform. It was a platform that wasn't controlled by the super elite institutions. Uh, Stanford didn't control it. MIT didn't control it. All these places that you think of that usually had control over the computers didn't control it. It was controlled, co-owned by the people. Um, but I'm sure in 2017, because of these new platforms, you're wondering about the future of WordPress. Um, you might have some fears about its future. So that's why uh, in every room I've been to, I, I look for these fears that you might have because my role is to address those fears. Because there is no hope without addressing fears. And when you look at how mobile technology has progressed so rapidly, and when all of us in this room know that to use WordPress via mobile is not the best experience imaginable, you get afraid. Like, whoa, why am I using this instead of this other thing? Because this other thing has had billions of dollars invested in the experience to be the best experience you could ever have. You should be afraid. I would be afraid if I was someone who was counting on this ecosystem to prosper. But that's just one example of fear. So if you have a fear about like the future of WordPress and a little bit of a card, please write it down. You don't have to put your name on it and send it up here and I want to collect your fears. Now, once I have those fears, like I have so many fears, it's just like I wake up in the morning and like, oh no. Like, uh, is, here's one fear I have from uh, a large enterprise company. Uh, it's reliance on PHP. That sort of comes up a lot. Who knows this fear? The fear of PHP. Come on, it's okay. It's all right, you're friends. 
Yeah, what is this fear? It's a fear that WordPress is using a technology that is no longer the coolest programming language on the block. It's true. Uh, however, many large companies use PHP still. They just don't talk about it as much. Uh, so don't be too fearful. Uh, other reason why you can be less fearful. It's all basically running on top of the C language, which is developed in the 80s, as we know too. <laughs> so old technology is not necessarily bad technology. Um, other fears. As a new member to this community, will I be able to keep up with things? I know that in this room, there are some people who, for, for you, this is your first encounter with a WordCamp experience or this WordPress. Who's, this, who's their first experience here? Come on, go ahead. This is my first one. Thank you, first people. So all the first people, it's like it's the weekend. Did you notice it was the weekend? And it's like the summer. You could be barbecuing. You could be hanging out, you know, having a non-alcoholic beverage or an alcoholic beverage, just hanging out. But you chose to break through your hedonism and wanted to come and hang out with other people at this thing you heard about. So you're a little bit nervous. Like, is this community that I want to be a part of? And what I think is so important, as I've observed in the WordPress ecosystem, is this, this ability to have a code of conduct policy, number one, and number two, to strive for inclusion. Now, why is inclusion important is something that I am asked a lot about. Um, I, when I joined Automatic, I added the word inclusion in my title, as Mel pointed out. And many people ask me, why would you have this word inclusion in your title? What does it have to do with design? And the answer is very simple. The answer is that you cannot design something unless you understand who you're designing it for. And for me coming into this WordPress, mind you, I was a 2004 user of WordPress. And I stopped using it around 2007. I came back to it. I left it. I remember, actually, um, Mel knows this story. Uh, it was in 2014. I moved all of my content off of WordPress using Jekyll to build server-side pages that I never had to maintain anymore. And I was so happy. And then one day, I meet Matt Molnaweg, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should switch back. So anyways, I've come back a third time, like in Gandalf phrase. I'm like the green Gandalf of WordPress. Um, and in this process, I've been seeing how important inclusion is in the technology industry. Um, how many of you have worked in Silicon Valley? Silicon Valley workers? Right. So from that ecosystem, you can sense a, a great ecosystem of a lack of inclusion. Thank you for the fears. Thank you. Uh, I feel kind of evil when I take people's fears, but it's actually a good reason. Um, and I could see how excluding this universe of technology was. I could see it every day. I was like, whoa. So, so the problems that the technology industry tends to want to solve are the problems of generally the wealthiest people around which isn't a very inclusive ecosystem. But not only that, it's not good business. Because the entire population is not only wealthy people. It's real people. Thank you. And so part of what I've tried to put front and center on inclusion is this challenge in the technology industry, which if the technology industry cannot address it, I believe that the WordPress ecosystem can address it in a way that no other ecosystem can. Thank you, Mel. Um, who has a question about inclusion before I go into that? Any questions about like, what is this word, inclusion? Have you heard this word, inclusion? Well, if it's, if it's a word you're sort of unfamiliar with, think of the opposite word, exclusion, right? Exclusion. So how many of you have ever felt excluded from something? growing up, so, something, right? Like everyone knows that, right? And when you remember that feeling, 
the last thing you want to do to someone else is that same thing, right? Like um, I was uh, yesterday talking to uh, someone who was is, is helping uh, BlackRock, the investment firm, with inclusion initiatives. And the CEO there was seen as someone who could never understand this, or so was thought. But this, the reason why the CEO started caring about inclusion was he heard the employees in his company and how the company made him felt. And it reminded him of how for two years after he had failed miserably on Wall Street, nobody would take his calls. And once he remembered that feeling, he vowed he would not make this a way that he'd allow his company to behave. And so remember this feeling of being excluded when you have a problem with this word inclusion? Because it's very easy to understand inclusion that way. But why is inclusion so hard in the technology industry? It's because something is happening that we are only starting to feel now because of these large cloud-based companies. These large cloud-based companies, because they're so good at mining all the data of humanity, there are patterns now that are emerging that we will see over the next five years that really will impact all of society. One simple example, and I've been studying this really over the last two years, and it's, it's a bit frightening. Um, when I think about what this ecosystem can do for that, I believe it's a very important point. Because what is happening today, for instance, um, how many of you use uh, Google Translate when you're trying to figure out how to translate something? Come on. I mean, like, I use it all the time. Like, oh, my gosh, how, what, what does that mean? You're right, you type it in. And it's, it, it wasn't very smart in the beginning. Remember, like, eight years ago or six years ago? Eh, I don't know if that's a good translation, right? But after it's kind of like absorbed so much information that all we've typed, you know, all the stuff out there, all the literature out there, um, a researcher at Princeton has pointed out that if you type in Turkish in non-gendered pronouns, he is a doctor, he is a nurse, it's translated as he is a doctor, she is a nurse. So. Because Google's database is analyzing historical this, that, whatever. Now, I give you this example as an example of how the, this lar these large cloud-based systems, because they use machine intelligence and they're just pattern matching, they're, all, they're matching bad patterns of the past. And so we're going to see more of this. There's also now systems for, have you seen Minority Report, this movie where it would predict crime? Right, it would predict crime. Crime's going to happen here. Let's go to the crime scene and solve the crime before it happens. So now, uh, police, uh, 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 d different police entities and different min in large municipalities can now buy machine intelligence powered software to predict where crime is happening. And where will these machine intelligence algorithms predict where crime is happening? It'll predict that crime is happening in parts in neighborhoods that are poorer. Because that's what past data showed. And these patterns that we fought against in many ways are now going to be ingrained because of machine intelligence. Now, why do I share this? Do I share it to make you afraid? It's what actually keeps me going. It gets me excited about this interesting thing called WordPress. I was just I was just in WordCamp Europe, and I'm like, whoa! You were all like taking off a weekend to hang out and learn some nerd nerdly type of things and some things useful for your career. And maybe you're trying to break into the technology world and you want a piece of it. And the other way is a little bit more exclusive, and this way is more inclusive. So it's a movement of people. And it is people like yourselves who can rewrite those rules of what technology is going to become without us. Because the code is open, which is really an odd thing. Like uh, someone pointed me to an article about how WordPress is not secure. It's not secure. It's a security risk. It's a security flaw. 
It's some kind of thing, you know? It's like a bug in the code. And I'm like, do you not think Facebook has bugs in it? Do you not think like Gmail has bugs in it? We just don't know when it has bugs, right? No one is like saying, I gotta fix this thing, whatever, and it's on, everyone knows about it. So whenever someone tells you that, remind you that you just don't know. But in this ecosystem, we all know and we work to protect it. Whoa, I feel all these fears in my hands, good. Okay, whoa, I have all caps fears too. You know, all caps, all caps can sound. However, as I've gotten deep into inclusion, um, for, uh, by the way, I am 50 years old, and I also advocate that whenever I am looking at WordPress things or anything, I always ask for the type size to be a little larger. Um, because when I was in my 20s, my typography professor uh, once told me, oh, Mr. Maeda, very nice design in 5.5 universe. Great, I can't read it. And I was like, what is he talking about? It's like so beautiful, it's so small. And like now I'm like, oh, I know what he was talking about. Uh, but many older people use uppercase in their email because it's easier to read. Right? Isn't it like yelling at you? It's like, it's so much more legible. So another way to frame things. And so um, as I've begun this journey, deeper into inclusion because I have to hold myself to a higher standard all the time. Like, oh my gosh, I said that or I did this. And I'm like, thank goodness, I discovered something I did wrong. Um, so uppercase, different people. Okay, so fear that we'll lose the new users while striving for the cool future. See Gutenberg. Who knows about Gutenberg? There was an actor, Steve Guten Gutenberg. Okay, right, Gutenberg. <laughs> There's like the Gutenberg, the person who was like in uh, like 80s, 90s movies. If you're my age, you know what I'm talking about. Um, there's Gutenberg. If you're like a print design person, you wake up in the morning and have like an altar for Gutenberg because he invented printing, but somewhat controversial because apparently Koreans invented printing. So all very, very complex history. Uh, but anyways, um, Gutenberg is a new editor attempt. You know when you like open up like WordPress and it has this editor, Gutenberg is a push to have a new editor that has some layout capabilities embedded in it. And it is, on the one hand, it is accepted and exciting. On the other hand, it is threatening the past. Um, I would say that this is a valid fear for everyone who did things the way things happened before. But for those who you're brand new to this, it, you won't notice it. And so in every, in every community, this balance is a leadership question. And I'm watching this carefully now. Fracturing of the community. You have good fears in this room. You're like so early in the morning. Uh, fracturing of the community could happen, definitely, because this is a volunteer-based organization. And people who have been there longer than you have different vested interests. Um, who, uh, so who, who's been in a community for over 10 years? Some community, some community, right? So you know what that's like. You earned your right in that community. And when a newcomer comes along and wants to rock the boat, what happens to that person who wants to rock the boat? Who knows what happens? Go ahead, raise your hand. I rock the boat all the time, so I know it happens. Yes, what happens? Resistance. resistance happens. Okay, now I have to tell you that resistance is a wonderful thing because resistance means that somebody cares. Because if nobody cared, then it'd be a bad thing. So if you are in a community and you see resistance, get excited because it means people care. And I will say that communities that fracture, fracture because the entire community didn't know how to pull itself together. Because pulling yourself apart is part of how muscles get stronger. The question is how they grow back stronger. So be afraid of not being able to get back together. But don't be afraid of agitations. This fear, performance on large sites, 
You have a fear of performance on large sites. Hmm, well, that's true. Well, what I, what I will note, having gone deeper into this ecosystem of WordPress, knowing that a lot of these large sites do run on WordPress, I have less fear than you do, but don't believe me, come and ask me about this fear later. I also take individual fear conversations. Gutenberg, all caps, fear, real thing, brand new thing, okay? All right, and if you are fearful of it, uh, as someone who's seen things enter the system, uh, the nice thing about WordPress is it, there's always a request for more input. Um, very important thing, this idea of input. You know how like uh, when, you, when something happens and you, you express something, right? Like, oh, actually I don't like it this way, it should be this way, right? So I gave my input. And then like a week later, you're like, huh, you didn't listen to my input. You didn't listen to my input, right? That's a common experience. Who, who, who's had a, you didn't listen to me? Come on, I mean, I had it all the time, right? You didn't listen to me. I just told you you didn't listen to me. So there are two types of recipients of that message. One is they really didn't listen to you. It's like they didn't even like pass their eyeballs or didn't even like, you're like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> it's like didn't even hear it at all. Um, the second type, actually like, huh, okay, got that. Have to integrate that somehow, right? The third category did what you told them to do, okay? That you get evidence. But in this part here, always ask yourself, did you get this ladder signal? that they actually did hear you or not. If you've got that, that's not bad. Always look for that. If you don't have any of that, any validation of that, keep pushing harder. But if you have validation of that, it's a good sign that change can happen with your input. My fear, no longer open source. Well, I have to tell you that um, as far as I can tell, the WordPress ecosystem loves open source. And please keep this fear alive because it really is its greatest strength. In absence of this strength, this is not a, a great ecosystem. So please push on that fear, have that fear, hold that one. How fast is it changing fear? You could be afraid, you could be fearful that it's changing too fast, or you could be fearful that it's changing too slow. If you're fearful that it's changing too slow, be fearful. I'm with you on the fear because stuff's moving really fast right now. Um, if you're fearful that it's changing too fast, don't be afraid. Uh, why? Because one challenge in this era today is that unfortunately we believe that we, the way we age is similar to the way the world works, right? Like. Um, you're all New Englanders. Is that right? Are you New Englanders? And so there's this thing, some of you aren't, but those of you who have flown here specifically to be in Boston, we have this thing called winter. <laughs> oh, we have winter. We have winter. If you're from Arizona, you're like, winter? What? You know, we have winter. And we have winter, and winter comes with this thing called snow and dreariness, you know? And we have the, the trees change color. So we have this thing called seasons. So you can mark the seasons. And when you mark the seasons, thank you, Mel. Mark this, thank you. And when you, and when you mark the seasons like that, it's like, oh, a year passed. A year passed. A year passed. So you have a cadence, right? Like, oh my gosh, a year passed, a year passed, a year passed. Now, there's a secret. The way to survive in tech today is to think like an older person. So some of you may be older depending upon how you look. I don't want to be biased. But some of you are older and you know what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the thing when you get older is everything is moving faster. Now, how does that make sense? Well, I discovered this talking to my 80-year-old mother. My mom's like, oh yeah, mom's like, yeah, mom, you know, everything keeps happening so fast, like, I was just like yesterday that that was, you know, and then as I began to reason with my mother, I realized, oh, 
Well, the reason why everything is moving so fast is because everything fractionally in your life is shrinking. Like when you're six years old, summer is super long, right? Oh my gosh, summer is so long, right? Because that's three months out of six years. That's a big proportion of your life. But when you maybe become 18, it's like three months out of 18 years of your life. It's a pretty sizable chunk of your life. But by the time that you're 80, right? Three months divided by 80 times 12, you know, it's actually a smaller fraction. So life is speeding up as you get older. Think of that and think about the impact of computing and Moore's Law. Because Moore's Law is operating at an even greater pace. And although experts say it has stopped, uh, it is stopping, it's the impact we are still feeling it. What is Moore's Law? Moore's Law is a doubling of transistors every roughly 18 months, predicted since the, 17th, in the 70s. It isn't a physical law. It is a conjecture that the semiconductor industry can move that fast. And so since the 70s, computers have been doubling in speed and power every 18 months. What does this mean? It means that a computer that you use today is 9 billion times faster than the computer in the 70s. What does this mean? It means that the impossibility of you buying a car in the 70s, you know, you buy a car, you know, it's a cool car, it goes like 60 miles per hour, 70, maybe 80 if you floor it, right? You know, gas mileage is so, whatever. 70, in the 70s, that was your car. That means that using Moore's Law thinking, your car in 2017 would go uh, at least 10 billion miles per hour and cost roughly the same and use roughly the same amount of energy. So think about that. That is physically impossible to fathom. But that's occurring in computing today. You can count on every year to two years Computing has doubled in power. And so, um, we have to be comfortable with this speed of change. And more importantly, we have, to be, we have to be ahead of it, or try to be ahead of it, because machine intelligence and these pattern matching systems and all the data we've given away, are, we're gonna see it control more and more of our lives. For instance, machine intelligence is being used to settle court, case, court cases now, to speed up rulings. Things like this is, are all happening. Um, and I believe that people are the vanguard that can, I wouldn't say stop it, but to teach it, teach our society how to behave. And we can't do it without an open source system that we can change, modify, reteach, and experiment with. Fear. Website generators like Squarespace and Wix will make WordPress and my job obsolete. Excellent point. So as someone who is quote unquote in charge, when I say quote unquote in charge, I believe I am part of a, a large ecosystem, a gigantic flat fluffy pancake, um, that my role is to somehow coalesce and bring together. Um, and However, I also look at everything outside the pancake factory, uh, and I see all the systems out there that have been well-funded and well-resourced, and frankly, beautifully designed and beautifully implemented. Um, I think that in many cases, these website generators, these systems out there, are taking off the table certain sites that you can build and make money around. That said, it depends upon what customers you're losing. If there are customers looking for a transactional, simple site that they think is somehow going to show up in a Google search on its own and suddenly fail without your expertise and help, yes. But for those customers that realize that they actually need a coach, they need someone to support them along that process, then no. Some will be lost. But some will be gained, but most importantly, they have to be found. And part of my mission is to understand 
both types of customers and in that find opportunity for more WordPress agents to benefit from that. Um, they are out there. Let me give you a simple example. Uh, one activity that I'm involved with right now is working in Detroit and Philadelphia in, uh, on the other side of the so-called digital divide. Uh, I'm working in neighborhoods in Detroit to understand uh, why different small businesses might want websites. And someone told me, John, that's so great that you're helping these people. And I said, no, you don't understand. I'm filling in my ignorance. I'm like, well, why would you need something like this? And through the process, I find over and over that they're looking not for technology, but they're looking for community. And so I feel that the technology part is part of the equation, but the community part is the larger part of the equation. I mean, many of you are small businesses yourselves, and the value is in those person-to-person -person exchanges. So I'm hopeful that, yes, there will, many, there will be many actors, companies that prosper in this desire to build sites, but this ecosystem can also prosper as well. PHP is not stable enough for the new world. Ooh, that felt like a Star Trek moment. I felt the dilithium crystal kind of like becoming purple or something. Um, I am not a PHP expert. I do know that 7 came out and it's faster. As for whether it's stable enough for the new world, I don't know. Um, but I do know that it is a technology that everyone is working on. And so therefore, it could be as good as anything else out there. So I will remain hopeful until you tell me that the dilithium crystal will no longer produce energy. I fear nothing. This is Sparta. Ooh, good movie. Uh, getting hacked. Ah, a common fear of the WordPress ecosystem is getting hacked. Um, as all of you know, everything is, everything is break-inable. As a VC friend of mine who is an expert in security investing, loves the fact that there are only two kinds of companies, ones that have been broken into and, and others that don't know they've been broken into. <laughs> so, so I'll just say that. Um, you're making a WordPress site more secure is important. And I'm glad that HTTPS is becoming more of a table stake type of thing. Um, so I think the more that you all as experts in this ecosystem share the fact that there are certain things that WordPress and et cetera hosting out of the box don't give you can help to reduce this, this issue. But again, everything is not secure. I think it's important to, to always make that clear. Not being able to meet the needs of the enterprise when compared to Drupal, such as granular permission and security. Huh, okay, that's great. Uh, when I say that's great, I'm not saying like awesome. I'm saying that now you're pointing out a specific uh, difference uh, between WordPress and Drupal. Who knows about this difference out there? Who knows about this? Right. So is anything being done about it? Uh, yeah, okay. Well, now this whole room's aware of it. That can change everything. Uh, I just want to note that the technology is interesting because if you see a problem, it likely can be addressed. Whereas in any other ecosystem, it's never going to get addressed. So thank you for this. This is a special fear of the te technical. Increasing costs. Fear of increasing costs. Um, I don't know what costs you're referring to, but definitely that would concern me. So please uh, come by later to tell me about that, because I'm very interested in how people in the ecosystem prosper. Um, and you can only prosper if you can have higher margins. So tell me about that. Oh, by the way, I spent part of my time getting an MBA as a hobby. Um, I was tired of people t telling me that I'm the creative person, so don't worry about the money. So I started getting worried about the money. So that's why I did my MBA 10 years ago as a hobby. Ah, uh, ooh, oh, I like this one. I'm afraid that WordPress will chase Medium and Squarespace to the detriment of their platform. Data structure matters. I agree with you. The worst thing to do is to copy somebody else because that's the fastest way to becoming irrelevant. So I agree with you. And if you think that is happening, 
uh, come see me because this is a design experience issue that I am tracking. WordPress will never sacrifice backwards compatibility. Oh, this is a really good one. So some of you, some of you who are brand new to the ecosystem will learn what I learned, which is that WordPress is compatible back to version 1.5 in many cases. Think about it for a moment. Think about what would have happened with Microsoft Word if it was still compatible with the first version of Microsoft Word, right? Wow, that's amazing. Um, will it never sacrifice backwards compatibility? From what I can tell, it sounds like that. But then again, I love lawyers. Why? Because lawyers can like make different ways to describe something. And what is law? Law is programming. Law is a kind of source code of society. So after becoming aware of this backwards compatibility issue, I am very open to understanding what does it mean to not sacrifice backwards compatibility? but be forward-looking. Why is it important? It's important because many of you in this room probably count on WordPress running at light speed, right? You just count on that. So we need both, we need to and. Okay, Ooh, this is really good. Here, what if WordPress goes away permanently? No more blogs and no more sites. Ah, thank you. Yes, because in the future, content may just be atomized. There may be no single record of a site, for instance. It may be just all little pieces of data floating out in one giant database that the large GAFA companies control. That, that is a, a very likely scenario. Um, who's used uh, voice interfaces by uh, uh, Alexa, et cetera, who's used them, right? So they don't care where the information is coming from. They don't need a website, per se. Uh, that is a real fear. Um, so. I'm keeping track of that fear for, for all of us and keep track of that fear in you. And if you have good fear to give me there, please give it because I love those fears. Security issues with WordPress and plugins. Yeah, well this is, a, this is an issue, right? Because I have a, a friend who switched his entire organization over to Drupal because he saw that many, many of, the, of the subgroups inside his company kept installing plugins and introduced new security issues uh, inside, the, inside the, um, the wall, and therefore uh, he didn't want to deal with it anymore. So that's a real concern. Uh, that said, I believe that this ecosystem can build systems that can behave differently because it is an open source system. Um, I think some of these problems don't get heard very often, quite frankly, uh, because what happens with technology ecosystems is they're driven by technology people. Um, when I was at MIT, people would always ask me, why do we only care about technology? And I said, well, why does the T stand for technology in MIT, right? Get it? MIT, right? So many times I think that when we think about just the technology and what it can do, what it, what it can do, we need to think about what it can do. And so I urge all of you to bring your inclusive thinking around what do customers and clients need and bring it to the foreground in all these forums. Bring it to anyone who will listen. I will listen to your fear. I have your fears now. I feel kind of evil doing that, but I have your fears. I get to add them to my pile. And address the things that I wanted to talk about. Because why did I want to hear from you? It's because I've spoken in many places and just blah, blah, blah. And I had no idea what you wanted. So I wanted to give something to you that you wanted or might need. And the last thing you need is time taken away. I want to close with something that I learned from this young man over here, Morgan Jessen. Morgan, hi there, Morgan. Morgan, I also have a convo with Morgan, like a convo that I have actually with many people in the WordPress ecosystem. And I hear it constantly framed in the way that Morgan presented it to me, because it's different for how, for how some people see WordPress. You know, what is WordPress for? It's for building a website or building a blog, right? It's a technology to do that, okay? So, 
Morgan says, when people say, I want a website, what they really mean is I want marketing and SEO and we never want to Google. Like, who knows this? Who, who knows this fact, right? Who knows that they wanted to show up on Google, they wanted to work well on mobile, it has to be high performance, and therefore, you know, SEO is like better just based upon performance. So, but this is really hard to, to, to do because it is a kind of new thing that people care about, your clients care about, that is different from how the technology works. So I want to invite all of you who raise your hand to say it louder and speak up in the forums and reach out to me if helpful as I work to amplify this message that the new consumer wants something. And the more that the technology and the community can deliver it, then everyone's going to win even more. This word win is tough in 2017 in a, in a very fair world, right? Like, no, it's not about winning. It's about whatever. Well, I don't know. I'm like a, I grew up in a time when like running fast and excelling was a good thing. So I want to encourage us all to imagine that if we win as an ecosystem, we are able to actually challenge the forces that are out there that intend to truly, not just win, but dominate every system that we know out there. Okay, we had some time together. Thank you, everyone. Morning. Thank you for your